daytime to preach the word, right? Daytime, when there's light, I keep the God light. And like the word is the light to our footsteps. misconception that this dude just that some random man just sat down and wrote the whole Bible and just gave it to people and was like here you know just take this book and just I want you to obey it and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna control your life with this book and you're gonna come you're gonna you're gonna obey me and what I say let's look about that let's go to first That which is perfect will come. That which is in part shall be done away. Hmm. Interesting. Let's go to Psalm 138. try to make your life better. When you 
get saved, the Spirit comes into you. And you have a mind like Christ. Not fully. When you get to heaven, man, that's going to be great. You will have a Christ-like mind. All the perverted stuff, all the sinning, all the cussing, none of that. you think this world has to offer you. I don't know why you like being here so much, but it's going to catch up with you. Trust me. I mean, if you can't look around, if you can't look at politics, if you can't look at nature and everything that's dying, fish, animals becoming extinct, if you can't just look around and be like, huh, this isn't going so good. And pick up a Bible, maybe you actually actually find your life making some sense because as it is now if you're lost your life I'm not going to turn there but you live unto God and be die unto God nobody dies to themselves nobody lives to themselves we all have to answer for the life that God's given us we all have to answer for what you do we, in this life, in the next life. I mean, people act like people act like this life is just so great and just accomplished so much without Jesus. life comes, God's looking at you. And all the saved saints are looking at you. And everybody's going to be judging you. Yeah, all that nice stuff that you, all that amazing stuff you accomplished down here, moving up at your job, getting this, getting that, sleeping with 40 different women. <laughs> Good job. I got an NIV Bible here. Sister in the Lord, babe, give me this. Uh, I want to turn to the exact same scripture that we were just at. Psalm 138. And I want to make a, a very clear distinction here between this book and the King James Bible. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down for your holy temple and will praise your name. For your unfailing love and your unfaith and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree when it surpasses your fame. Give it a break. Get a King James Bible. Stop acting like it's the hardest thing in the world to read. Just ask God to help you with your understanding. Is that hard? All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. We're going to touch some more on this perfect thing that Paul was talking about. Amen. Perfect is coming. That in part. 
parts that we've taken out of the way. I know I've probably been quoted that correctly. You get what I'm saying. Hebrews chapter 7. And we will go to verse 17. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever and after the order of Melchizedek. Let's come down to verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. Better hope. Testament, better testament, hope. That's what you have if you read the King James Bible. Oh, my sermon notes. You think you have hope that you can be reincarnated? How do you? Okay, so you come back as a bird going to be down here in this rotten, filthy, sinful world. Good job. I mean, you don't have hope for something better. You don't have hope for being perfect. You don't have hope for living with God. <laughs> people, people blow my mind. God already said it would happen. You absolutely blow my mind. Narrow is the way. Straight is the gate. But broad, <laughs> you got everybody taking this broad way. And not even thinking twice about it. Yeah, I'm here to give you the gospel. I don't want to hear it. You know Jesus loves you. Oh, I don't want to hear it. You know Jesus died on the cross. I don't. I don't care. Jesus is a made-up man. He is misogynistic and homophobic. How about you wake up and smell the coffee? How about that? How about you wake up and realize your stance is to get homophobic people? I mean, what's that going to get you? I mean, a, a little bit of satisfaction, but you're still going to get old and die. male hating transgender depart from me what is this nonsense you're talking about the world, the world has changed so much it's really uncomfortable like I hope we get back to 
because these next couple months they're gonna be real rough. I tell you, stuff is about to get real strange. Stuff is about to get real strange. You people that are lost. Now you want to talk about God. <laughs> okay. Alright, I'm getting off on a tangent. Okay. We were in verse 22. I'll reread it. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Uh, we can read verse 23. And they truly were many priests, but they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath in un changeable priesthood. Unchangeable priesthood. He is our priest. In the Old Testament, th there's a clear distinction of the Old Testament and the New Testament. I'll see how you can think that this book was written in one day. You, in the Old Testament, they had priests and had to sacrifice. Now, we have a Changing priest, Jesus Christ. It's so simple. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you're not saved, you're not going to get it. That's why you have to get saved. This book is not for unsaved people. Get saved. Read the book. Read the book. Get saved. Say something. If you're if you're a man with a family and you're taking your family to a Catholic church, so your son or your daughter or your wife can call another man father, you should be ashamed of yourself. Having your son or your daughter or your wife tell this wicked this disgusting, vile sinner about your problems, about your sin. Like he's gonna, like he can do anything. He bleeds just like you bleed. The only thing is, he's got, he, he, he's got a couple of strings to pull. <laughs> couple of strings to pull. Okay. God can toss the entire shoe. All he's got is like a couple of strings. God will pick up the entire shoe station and chuck it. I'll never wrap my head around Catholic. And Billy Graham having a, pic a couple pictures of uh, Catholic, I would question that guy. I would question him very strongly. You think he called him father? I don't doubt it. Sins are forgiven. No, they aren't. You're gonna walk. You're gonna walk right back out and start doing the same mess again. He'll probably last for like what five minutes. Oh, thank God. 
goodness, my Father, He forgave my sins. Even though there was no blood atonement at all. That's so foolish. You deserve what's coming to you, Jerk. I'm gonna be honest. Verse 26. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. And people think Jesus liked to hang out with sinners. People like to hang out. Jesus liked to hang out with people that knew that they were sick and that they needed healing. He didn't just like to be around people like, oh yeah, yeah, Jesus, here's a cigarette. Honestly, think Jesus would sit by somebody who's just smoking a cigarette. I mean, let's be so for real right now. Like, let's cut, let's, let's, let's cut. Oh, Jesus is such a, he's such a loving God. You know, Jesus was the God of the Old Testament. Jesus was before the foundation of the world. That means he's eternal. First of all, it was multiple men that wrote it and translated it. And people are always like, I, I see people that actually are like, people were saved, always saved by looking forward to the cross. People always knew. People always knew that Jesus was going to die on the cross and that's how they were saved. Matthew 16, verse 20. Then charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Okay. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Fence unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. Oh man, amen to that. Most of you modern people out there, y'all are savoring a dime of what God, of what God cares to save. You just savor things of this world. All you want to do is watch TV, listen to secular music. You don't want to do anything you gotta pertain for God. Scroll your phone. Ooh, 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 ooh.
said, you fool. Get, get, get behind me. Don't, don't stand in front of me like you've got some authority. Get behind me, dude. camera cut out but it's it's really a great thing it really is when you're saved and you get to wake up every morning and praise God and you get to praise God before you eat you get to praise God when there's a bunch of stupid stuff going on like politics right now and you can just say hey whatever happens Lord I'm yours it doesn't matter through trials through tribulations and not the tribulation. We're not going through the tribulation if we're saved. We are leaving. That is the hope that we have. It's so sickening that like Christian, modern Christians are like, yeah, we're going to see the tribulation and then the Antichrist is going to come. We're going to see it. <laughs> what a miserable life. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get my head chopped off. <laughs> Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15, one of my favorite verses. Study. Oh, just, you know what, just for, uh, just for a little giggles, let's see what the NIV says. Let's see. I know this is going to be some horse crap. First word, study. King James Bible. Make sure you study. God told you to study. Now, what does the NIV say? <laughs> Do your best. Don't study. Just, if, if you just don't want to study, and you want to study sometimes, and you just... You don't really want to get in too far into it, but you just you, you you want you want to be in a comfortable little space and just and just you know just work on your own time. You, do your best. You know what the King James Bible says: study. Because if you don't study, you're not going to know anything. Study to show thyself proof of God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. 
the Bible is going to contradict itself if you do not correctly divide it. If you don't read it in its proper context, it's not going to make sense. Of course it's not. There's so many contradictions you, because they were written in different time periods for different people. I got so sick of that. Oh, the Bible has contradictions. How about you sit down and read the Bible and if you don't get it, read it again. And if you don't get it that time, ask God for some guidance and then see what happens that third time you read it. It's so sickening. And people are always like, oh, Paul, he was, he was such a, he's such a heretic. He's not even supposed to be in the Bible. He wasn't even an apostle. Well, first of all, he saw Jesus. Second of all, he was able to do miracles. He was able to do signs and wonders. And he should be able to prophesy, right? If he's an apostle, right? Let's go to, turn over to chapter 3, verse 1. This note also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's not going on today. Covetous. That's not going on today. Bolsters. Nah. Proud. Not at all. Blasphemers. Nah. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. <coughs> Truth breakers. False accusers. <sighs> Incontinent. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. No. No. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lusts. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Isn't that just unfortunate? You got people that don't even look at the Bible and it just describes them all while being written 400 years ago. Just this Bible is just too outdated. It's just, it's just too outdated. We need to update it and change the words around because we're smarter than God and God, it's irrelevant. Sure. Let's go with that. Oh man, it's getting kind of hot out here. I need to, need to wind this up. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And turn on over to chapter, or verse 29. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Prophets were necessary when we didn't have the finished canon. Back then, prophets were needed, two or three, to confirm what each other were saying. Was it of God? In First, in first John, I believe, it says, try the spirits. Each spirit is subject to the prophet. If all prophets are aligned together, it makes sense. You can be comforted because they all align. It's how it was back then. 
and the Bible tells you you need something to prophesy in order to confirm whether it's of God or not but since that which is in part has passed we have a more sure word of prophecy we have the Bible we do not need any more apostles we do not need any more prophets we do not need anything else but evangelists preachers there's a third one I don't I, don't, I can't think of it we just need to get this word out that's all you need to have excuse me you need to have faith while doing it without it it's impossible to please God you cannot please God without faith especially in his son I don't even see how I don't even see how you could think that you could even possibly step one toe I don't even know you, 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 I don't even see how you could think that you could even look in the direction of heaven if you don't even believe in Jesus. That is... <laughs> that's crazy. But, that's all I got for now. Um, my next study will probably be on the Godhead and not the Trinity. Just that, that's a Catholic word. I'm not, I'm not naming God by that. No, thank you. But, yeah, uh, if you want me to do a study on anything else, uh, leave it in the comments. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.